We're here with uh, with George Villardi of Sierra Vista Junior Junior High School, High School in uh, California, and recognized as one of uh, the outstanding uh, phys ed programs in the country. Um, and can you actually, George, kind of back up a few st steps and talk about what designations does your school have, and what kind of things have you your school and your program, how you've been recognized as being a, a successful PE program and a model program? We've been very fortunate over our journey, our nine-year journey to obviously win a lot of uh, accolades of uh, what we've accomplished. Uh, the most obvious one is uh, we're, uh, we're a demonstration center for the nation uh, by the President's Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. Uh, we got that recognition back in 2006, 2007, and ever since that, uh, it's been one thing after another. For that award, you know, we're required to host P demonstrations. We, we cannot say no mm -hmm. to anyone uh, for them to come and see our program in action and to learn about our program. Uh, so what it's done for us, it has widened our avenues of the type of people that come. At first, it was mostly P teachers mm -hmm. that came and visited, but now we have administrators, city, city leaders, delegates from all around the world that come visit us, you know, it's like, wow. Right. So there's one. Uh, we've also been middle school of the year. Um, we've been uh, a recipient by our California State Board, uh, winning the Golden Bell Award, which is the highest recognition for any school to ever win. Right. And we won it for our p physical education program. Right. Um, for me individually, um, been uh, you know California Teacher of the Year, uh, California Coach of the Year, uh, middle School PE Teacher of the Year. Yeah. So I've been very fortunate uh, through this whole process uh, to win these awards. It's not why I'm in it, but uh, um, obviously my peers and other colleagues uh, have uh, nominated me, yeah. and I've uh, been very fortunate, you know, to win these awards along the way. Now, you you said to me earlier that your main focus as an early phys ed teacher was primarily coaching, but then you but you made a shift to not put so much emphasis on coaching and wh why, what the, why the change? Sure, uh, see, I began teaching back in 1994, 95, taught, uh, taught seven years in San Diego. And uh, my first priority back then, uh, I, was a, I'm a I was a cross country and track coach, was coaching. Mm -hmm. That was my uh, passion. Yeah, how much time do you think you spent on co I'm coaching? Thinking about coaching versus teaching? You get 70, great. 30, 80. I would say on a 50s. given day, on a given day, 24 hours, uh, I would say 15 hours. On coaching? On coaching. Yeah. Thinking, thinking about, about planning, it, planning, planning talking, yeah. uh, setting up workouts, talking to kids, you bet. Yeah. yeah. And the teaching, pretty much on the fly. Right. That's, that's the reality, that's how it was. Yeah. Do, um, do you think if you look back and ask some of those students in those first few years of your teaching, would they recognize you now? Oh no, it'll be night and day, Yeah. night and day. Not that I did a bad job back then, right. but I did not understand, you know, really how to truly set up a lesson plan, Right. truly set up a curriculum, mm. truly how to set up concepts of why we were doing what we were doing. Yeah, and, and then you came to Sierra Vista, who or what was the influence that made the shift to, for you to think of, you know, beyond the physical or we, more than just When coaching. I moved from San Diego to uh, Canyon Country to Sierra Vista, uh, that's when I began, the, sh uh, the shift began. Uh, began. Uh, me changing from the OPE, mm -hmm. which is teaching the traditional sports, that's what I was taught coming out of college, yeah. to the new PE. And uh, for us, the new P, the person that influenced me was Phil Lawler. Uh, the internet, you know, was very powerful in giving all this information. Obviously, he's in Illinois. I'm in California, so I read I read a lot of articles about Phil, about what he's been promoting, the fitness-based curriculum, mm -hmm. and uh, seeing how he began to incorporate the technology of what was there at the time, mm -hmm. using heart rate monitors and so forth, uh, the, the beginning infancy of extra gaming products. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going, wow, this is a better practice. Mm -hmm. And I, ever since those articles that I read about Phil uh, with Madison Junior High in Naperville, that began my transition of changing my philosophy as a teacher mm -hmm and two, changing my priority, where I changed from coaching to teaching, from 
teaching mm -hmm. to coaching. And now, uh, you know, I've been co coaching over 18 years. I retired two years ago from coaching. Uh, I solely put my emphasis now on what I do at Sierra Vista. Mm -hmm. And obviously with me traveling all around the United States, giving the message about what we do at Sierra Vista, mm -hmm. uh, it's been a great, great opportunity. Yeah, and I find it really interesting that some of our strongest proponents for fitness-based curriculum and successful programs have been Phil, Paul, yourself, former successful coaches. Yep. And that you, so you understand the demands and the time that you spent in coaching, yet you realized I won't say error in your ways, but you realize that it wasn't the way that we should be approaching all children and helping uh, all children. I totally agree because the way most physical education programs are set up is for the jocks. Right. Okay. Well, as a coach, when I was there in my PE classes, guess who I was looking for? Yeah. The jocks. Yeah. And that was wrong. That was wrong of me. With this new shift of what we're doing, We've gone the other way. The PE program that we have set up at Sierra Vista, the jocks, that's the easy part. They're going to flourish now even more. Mm -hmm. But now, they were the only 10%. Now we're focusing on the other 90%. Kids that don't like PE. Mm -hmm. Kids that maybe, eh, kind of like PE. You know, but we're really hammering on those kids because those are the kids that are not gonna be playing the sports when they get to high school. Those are the kids that we want them to continue living a healthy lifestyle. And even, of course, even with the jocks, because once you graduate from high school, you know, even a smaller few participate in athletics. Mm -hmm. Well, even after college, you don't participate in outdoor football. You know, you gotta do activities that you enjoy, and that's one of the things that we feel that we do a very good job with the variety that we have of giving the kids as much exposure to lifelong mm -hmm. activities. Yeah. And that's what interesting thing that we got out of Paul's message yesterday with touring his school was mm -hmm. that it wasn't until the l mid to late 90s where they started to get success in their sports programs. Right. After they made the switch to a fitness-based, more well-rounded curriculum, it, it, they found it improved There's lots of students in lots of different areas and not just, it did, just didn't benefit, you know, a basketball team or a volleyball team, but they've had success now on multiple sports levels and it may be in the future as your students kind of progress through and filter through to the high school that you'll probably start to see more and more success well we've already that seen way. that really you know remember we're junior high yeah so we're seventh and eighth grade we feed into our high school one high school one high school yeah. and uh you know the, the high school that i used to coach at okay at canyon high school well over the last nine years we've seen that our kids have become more fit well not knowing what we know now the high school coaches love us right. because they're coming so fit now into their program, they don't need to worry about that now. Now they can focus now on the skill development. Right. So uh, just in the last several years, our high school has won more league championships, state championships in a nine-year period than ever in the history of the high school. Wow. So you're already seeing the impact. We're seeing the impact. Wow. We're and seeing the impact. The, the name of the, the track and field runner that you mentioned that, that you used to coach. I used to coach. at the high school though, right? Yes. Uh, Alicia Johnson is her name. She came out of uh, Sierra Vista. Right. And also I was very fortunate to coach her at uh, Canyon High School. She uh, was a state champion, 800 meter runner, uh, running uh, 207 uh, in the 800 meters as a senior. Uh, she went to Cal Berkeley on a scholarship, indoor and outdoor All-American, uh, is now running professionally for Nike. She is our current number one ranked American woman in the 800 meter run Whew. for 800 meters. Wow. Uh, I think her last fastest time at the World Championships was 157. Hmm. Uh, for many people that are not track fans, uh, 157 for a woman is very fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was very fortunate to coach Alicia uh, in high school and we still keep in contact right. in fact she comes during the summer and throughout the year and works out in our fitness center oh wow that's great now uh, as kind of a final message I want, I want to leave you a few moments to talk to some of my students back at SUNY Cortland who are preparing to become teachers in the next year or two or maybe sooner going to student teaching what's something that that you think is one of the most important messages that you want them to leave uh, college with or your store start prepping their career for becoming sure. a professional physical educator you know a peer of ours you know I would the message a couple of messages number one 
be passionate about it. Be passionate. Yes, you're going to make mistakes just like I've made many mistakes mm -hmm. along the way. And that's how you're going to learn. But more important, be passionate about what you're doing. Uh, physical education, whether you choose to be elementary, junior high, or high school. that You need to make a decision along the way where you feel more most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, piggybacking off the being passionate about. Along the way, continue to educate yourself. Uh, don't feel like you know it all. Mm -hmm. uh, that's easy to do. Don't do it. Did you feel like you knew it all early oh, on? Oh, I felt like I was on top of the world, that I was this incredible coach and this forth, and uh, that was my downfall. Mm -hmm. You know, I wish I looked back now, I wish I would have learned more from others. Uh, I now have a, my own little inner circle of friends, right. uh, mentors and so forth, that I wish I had at my beginning of my career that I have now. But um, yes, have other people around you that are smarter than you, that are more knowledgeable than you, to have more experience than you, because you're gonna become a better physical education teacher because of it. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, thank you so much, George. Continue luck on everything, and we look forward to seeing more success and more great things out of Sierra Vista. Well, thank you very much.